Become a Saint with Nico, Episode 1. We're reading from the life of St. Philip Neri, Apostle of Rome and founder of the Congregation of the Oratory, from the Italian of Father Bacci, of the Roman Oratory, edited by Frederick Ignatius and Trobus, of the London Oratory. The Life of St. Philip Neri, Chapter 1. Birth and Boyhood of Philip. Philip was born in the city of Florence in 1515, the third year of Leo X's pontificate, in the month of July, six hours after nightfall, on the eve of St. Mary Magdalene. He was baptized in the church of St. John the Baptist, as is customary in Florence, there being in fact no other baptismal font in the city. He received his grandfather's name, Philip, and to this was added Romolo, from the great devotion shown in those parts to the saint of that name. His father, Francesco Neri, was a lawyer honorably known in his profession and a great friend to the religious orders, especially to the Dominicans. His family came originally from Castelfranco, but had been long established in Florence and had become allied with the chief noble families of the city, though in his time it had somewhat fallen into decay. His mother was named Lucrezia and was the daughter of Antonio d'Andrea of Marciano and Lena Soldi. The Soldi were one of the noble houses of Florence, and in the time of the Republic had long held high offices in the state. Francesco Neri had four children, two girls, Caterina and Elisabetta, and two boys, Philip and Antonio, Antonio who died young. Philip was gifted with excellent talents, an amiable disposition, a winning appearance, and a wonderful power of attraction, qualities which are usually found in those who are chosen to gain souls to God. His parents gave him an excellent education. He went through the usual course of grammar and succeeded so well as to not only keep up with his companions, but to astonish everyone. He also went on to the course of rhetoric and attained the greatest proficiency in it. His master in these studies was a certain Clement, a man of no small skill and learning for those times. Among the signs of future sanctity which Philip gave, while still a child, were a great reverence towards his elders, a singular modesty, and a more than usual attraction to the things of God. He was so obedient to his father that he never caused him the least uneasiness, except once when he gave his sister Katerina a slight push, because while he was reading the Psalms with his other sister Elisabetta, she kept on interrupting them in their prayers. For this fault, if fault it can really be called, he was corrected by his father, and when he reflected upon it, he was so grieved that he shed many tears. One takeaway from today's reading is that Philip is easily accepting correction. When his father told him something, he didn't get angry, but instead he reflected on how deeply this must have hurt God, it looks like, and then he shed many tears. One takeaway from today is how often do we actually shed tears over the little things, even if we're trying to do something good? Someone could annoy us, someone could irritate us, someone could do something that we think is getting in our way of loving God. So the next time something like that happens, remember St. Philip Neri, how he learned from his mistake. Even if he thought he was doing something good, what's more important is always treating people with love, always uplifting them, always treating them with joy even again when we think that they're an obstacle because love, as St. Paul says, never fails. So always treat people with love. Never let an irritation and annoyance get in the way.